Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a landmark watch considered one of the big three watches from Alango Unzona. This is the Zeitwerk. Launched in 2009, it immediately won the GPHG Egidor as the best watch of the year at the Oscars of watchmaking. Notably, it did so as a German-made watch at a Geneva-based competition. Now, the timepiece measures 42 millimeters in diameter by 12.9 millimeters thick, it's thinner than you think, and from lug to lug, 49.8 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. When you throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see it sits nicely. I would recommend it for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger. It fits well, it sits easily, but it is fairly broad across the wrist, so you're gonna wanna keep that in mind. It will fit underneath most sleeves and cuffs. Taking a look at the strap, you can see it is a sort of reddish brown, semi-gloss, large rectangular scale alligator leather. It has a folded edge, a monotone stitch, calfskin on the bottom. And you can see this is a factory strap from a Longa Unzona in outstanding condition. We also have the Longa pin buckle, which I always need to tout. If you're watching one of my videos for the first time, you can see it's Longa branded. And externally, there's a little bit of fasting on the edge. But it stands out for two reasons that have to do with its function. First we have an elevated bridge. So you can see the stanchions on each side. The bridge is elevated above. So when this sits inside the buckle on your wrist, it doesn't stack up, it sits inside the buckle. Now, we also have a retaining bar. So if you're like me, you have a small wrist, you can use the smallest hole in the strap or even punch a smaller one. You know that a tightly strapped watch can get stuck on the wrist. So to prevent the strap from getting pinned on the pin, so to speak, this little bar prevents the strap from sinking too far down and makes it easier to remove the watch when it's tightly strapped. The case is all of high polish. This is pink gold. We have lugs that are stepped out from the case. That's no surprise. That is long as standard. We have a domed bezel. We have a vaguely vintage-inspired, quasi-onion, knurled and fasted crown with a Longa company name outboard. And then on the dial, the outer dial is made of sterling silver, and then it's galvanized white. We then have the center dial, this time bridge structure that includes the seconds, the hours, minutes, and tens of minutes. This is actually part of the caliber, caliber L0431. You're looking at a German silver component, just as the bridges and plates are golden-hued German silver, so is this time bridge. And it's a nickel, copper, and zinc alloy. A lot of folks mistake German silver for actual silver, but it is the nickel, copper, zinc alloy that is highly anti-corrosive, and I should mention the reason it's used is because it harks back to the era of East German pocket watch making that created the area's renown in horology. So now the golden hue comes from the copper content. We do have hacking seconds, and we do have a quick set system for the time. It works just like this. You can turn it forward and you can turn it backward. And when you're setting, it will stop the movement. What you're looking at adjacent to the double digit for the minutes is actually a little pivot. That is a pivot stone for the wheels that comprise the minutes display. Manual wind with a massive mainspring of immense force. The watch, because it is so energy intensive, has a 36 hour power reserve that you can trace using this power reserve indicator. Turn it all over and we have a masterpiece, caliber L043. It handsomely fills the case back. So you wind the watch, and I have to mention winding a Zeitwerk is one of the great tactile experiences in horology. It gives you a lot of resistance because of the strength of the spring, but also has a wonderfully crunchy detent. You can see there is a Ratchet wheel with a click and click spring, black polished adjacent. You can see that the ratchet wheel features solarization. All of the other wheels feature satination. There's a wonderful spiral graining atop the barrel and the spring is so massive that one side of the spring is actually anchored to the base plate. We have a black polished quasi Maltese cross stop works. That's there for two reasons. One, to prevent overwinding and to stop the watch from running when the energy is no longer sufficient to jump the minutes. Now you can see the 
bridges feature glossuta stripes. There's a lot of mirrored beveling on the edge of the bridges because we have the steel bridge for the remontoire system right there. And then we have the German silver bridges and both of them are mirror beveled on their side. We have both fired blued screws and black polished screws. This watch features both. We have a black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism, a freehand engraved cock for the escape wheel with a black polished cap and a freehand engraved cock for the balance. The balance is free sprung. It has an overcoil hairspring. It's five position adjusted. Remember the overcoil helps the watch keep good time in every position because its mass is centered. And it has a slow beat rate that's aesthetically pleasing of 18,000 vibrations per hour. Now this is a 68 joule movement adjusted in five positions like a chronometer and despite the immense amount of torque in the barrel and the huge fluctuation of torque as it discharges, uh, we have constant force to the escape, and that's achieved by this mechanism, which has a second set of locking jewels. You can see it just jumped forward as it does once per minute. At the jump of the minute, energy comes downstream from the barrel. First it jumps the minute, then it turns a little pinwheel, which you can see just underneath my finger at the base of this bridge. And that is an air brake that slows down the transmission of energy. It's then transmitted this locking lever that unlocks once a minute and transmits the force into a set of two third wheels that sandwich a little blue hairspring, which you can just see. That hairspring gets topped off every minute, and it is that hairspring, the Remontoir de Galité, the constant force reservoir that powers the balance. The balance is never powered directly by the barrel. It's always the energy in that hairspring sandwiched between two third wheels. Finish is world class. You can see that the steel components are all set and finished on their tops. And in the case of the secondary locking lever, black polished. You can also see that there's beveling on the edge of the steel components, which is very, very difficult to achieve. German silver is a little bit easier and softer to finish, but this watch spares no expense. All of this is water resistant down to 30 meters, but it's not an aquatic watch. You have an Odysseus for that. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.